If you've ever wondered what Ethereum gas is, you're in the right place. You can picture Ethereum as a superhighway for digital transactions, and gas as the fuel that powers this highway. Just like you need fuel to drive a car, you need gas to execute transactions on the Ethereum network. It's the lifeblood that keeps everything running smoothly. So, if you're curious about Ethereum gas and want to learn more with practical examples, stick around. In this video, we'll be revealing all you need to know about Ethereum gas, including some simple optimization techniques that can help you save on gas costs. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by and seeing us here at Crypto Bookworm, the one-stop shop for all things cryptocurrency. If you're looking to stay updated on the latest and greatest in the world of digital currency and assets, you've come to the right place. It's a wild ride though, so buckle up and join us as we navigate the exciting world of crypto. We're gonna have some fun and learn how to stay ahead of the game together. First off, let's tackle the question. What is Ethereum gas? Ethereum gas is the fuel for the Ethereum blockchain. It's consumed when a smart contract or a digital agreement is executed. The more complex the contract, the more gas it consumes. When you send an Ethereum transaction, you must pay a transaction fee in gas. It's like paying for a bus ticket to travel around Ethereum City. The fee depends on two factors the amount of gas required for your transaction, and the gas price, which determines the priority of your transaction being processed. This is like choosing between a regular bus or an express bus. The higher the gas price, the faster your transaction gets included in the next block. Now let's explore why Ethereum gas is so important. While gas fees add to the cost of making a transaction on Ethereum's platform, they serve an important purpose. They make Ethereum City safer for its residents. Requiring a fee for each transaction makes Ethereum a less attractive target for hackers who may try to spam the network with requests. It's like having a ticket system for city buses to prevent overcrowding. This improves cybersecurity and helps the network run more efficiently without spammers slowing down capacity. Now you might be wondering, what is the cost of Ethereum gas? Much like the cost of living in a city, the price of gas fees on Ethereum's platform can go up and down. Critics of Ethereum have been frustrated with higher gas fees and the time it takes to process a transaction. If you've ever been hit with a surge charge from a taxi during rush hour, you may understand this frustration very well. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far and want to help our channel grow, consider subscribing. It's like giving a thumbs up to our city tour guide. It will provide the YouTube algorithm with more data to work with and make our team feel appreciated. Your support helps us continue creating engaging and informative city tours and we appreciate every subscriber who helps promote our hard work. Moving on, let's learn about how you can calculate gas fees. There is a formula you can use to calculate gas fees for each transaction, but there are a few key terms to understand before we use it. First is GUE. In order to simplify the calculation, gas fees are measured in GUE. One ETH cryptocurrency coin is equal to one billion GUE. It's like converting dollars to cents for easier calculation. Next, gas units. The amount of energy, or computational power, that is consumed for each transaction. Each gas unit represents one GUE. It's like the amount of fuel consumed by a bus. Now for gas limit. The maximum amount of gas you are willing to spend on a given transaction, which is later multiplied by the base fee plus tip. Gas limits are typically set at a fixed amount depending on the type of transaction. You must be careful to ensure the gas limit meets the amount required for the transaction you are trying to execute. A simple transaction, like transferring ETH from one user to another, would require a gas limit of 21,000 GUE. If you set your gas limit at 30,000, you get 9,000 GUE back after the transaction is completed. However, if you set the gas limit at 10,000 GUE, the network would consume the 10,000 as it attempts to validate the transaction. Not only will the transaction fail, but you'll lose the GUE that was consumed during the attempt. Generally, your wallet should indicate the gas limit for the transaction you want to make. Then we have base fee. This is the minimum amount of gas required to perform a transaction on the Ethereum network. Base fees are determined by supply and demand and are adjusted based on the number of transactions happening on the network in real time. It's like the base fare for a taxi ride. Lastly, we have priority fee or tip. This is an extra fee that you can choose to pay in order to validate your transaction request sooner. It's like giving a tip to the taxi driver to ensure a smooth ride. Now that you understand all the terms, the formula to calculate your total gas fee is gas limit times base fee plus tip. For example, say you wanted to send a friend one ETH on the Ethereum network and the gas limit was 21,000 GUE and the base fee required to request the transaction was 100 GUE. In order to try to make this transaction successful, you add a tip of 2 GUE. 
After making sure your limit is set for at least 21,000, you can request the transfer. If we plug that into the formula, it looks like this. 21,000 times 100 plus 2 equals 2,142,000 guay. The price of ETH fluctuates, but for this example, let's say 1 ETH equals 2,000 US dollars. That means, when converted to ETH, your total gas fee would be 0.002142 ETH. In essence, your total gas fee for this transaction expressed in USD would be about $4.28. Now let's delve into the optimization techniques that can help you save on gas costs. It's like finding the best time to travel in the city to avoid traffic. By optimizing your transactions, you can reduce gas consumption and save on transaction fees. So, how can you reduce your fees? First up, you must be patient. The simplest way to reduce gas fees is to simply wait until there is less traffic on the Ethereum network. Gas fees are driven by supply and demand, so as the number of transaction requests decreases, the cost of gas fees will go down. This isn't always an option, and as Ethereum becomes more popular, the traffic on the network will continue to rise. But if you have the time, there might be a slow period when you can spend less on fees. Next up, reduce your tip. Priority fees are optional and you don't have to include a tip. However, submitting a transaction request without a tip might cause you to have to wait longer before your order is fulfilled. Lastly is the Layer 2 scaling option. Ethereum has been searching for solutions to improve scalability and reduce transaction time. Layer 2 scaling solutions allow for transactions to take place off-chain, meaning outside of the Ethereum network. The transaction is then added back to the network to be validated. Because the transaction only needs to be validated when it is added back, less gas is required. Layer 2 scaling reduces gas fees for the transactions it handles, but it also reduces the amount of traffic on the Ethereum network, leading to lower base fees for all users. Now that we have gone over the key aspects of Ethereum gas and its practical examples, hopefully you understand how to navigate this complex Ethereum ecosystem effectively. Remember, mastering gas is like mastering the art of driving, a skill that can save you time, money, and headaches. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of our other content on our website, CryptoBookworm.com. We have a wealth of information on cryptocurrency and NFTs to help you stay up to date and informed. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned something new, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Until next time.